scratch and sniff. This is scratch and sniff. Scratch and sniff. I didn't know I was agreeing to that. <laughs> I yeah. thought those days were over. Well, I really enjoy working in small theatres. I don't like the huge, spectacular shows, you know. I quite like to see the audience. The whites of their eyes. I, yeah, yeah, not quite, <laughs> not quite. I'm glad I'm not Emily Dickinson. What a miserable life led she. She didn't have Cadbury's dairy milk and nobody came for tea. My father said... Dentistry would be a very useful uh, career for you. You can use it any country in the world, and as a Jew, you might be thrown out any time. It still it remains in me, that, that possibility. I think all good actors are trying to shine a light on what it means to be human, mm. you know, and to look at human behaviour and, and to look at contradiction. And this is what and David Bowie saw this. Is this true? David Bowie saw this and then uh, wanted you to make a documentary about him. Yes, he asked me if I'd like to meet up and would I, he liked what he saw. And I mean, thought, what a compliment. Yeah, it, it kind of was. Maybe Fantastic. it was a rash judgment to make. <laughs> and this woman came up to me, she said, now tell me, have you made any movies? And I said, well, no, I haven't been to Betty Ford yet. Well, if I could have gone through that floor. <laughs> and somebody came pounding across the beach at me. I thought, oh, no, not here, not now. Leave me running towards me, running towards me. And I... And they ran straight past me. <laughs> <laughs> by hook or by crook, I ended up meeting them in their hotel. The words breaking in are so vulgar. For a 16-year-old Beatlemaniac <laughs> to spend eight days with John and Yoko, I still don't believe it. And then I was with Douglas mm. uh, Adams. I will always remember Douglas's immortal words. She can't sing, she can't dance, she can't act. What's the good of her? <laughs> and for some reason, I was insulted. And then the door opened, and I went... Blimey, you're Shelley Winters. And she said, and who are you? And I said, I'm Derry Foles. And she put her tongue right down my throat. <laughs> I never saw her again the rest of the evening. Are you enjoying now far more than you were enjoying the height of your success? No. Because at the height of my success, I was on private jets and limousines and I wouldn't be stuck in a pub with the likes of you. <laughs> well, that's charming, that is. And Britt Eklund turned and gave me a smile such as you have never seen. And I got this wonderful, utter, total attention until she realised I was absolutely no use to her whatsoever and it was all turned off as though the light was oh, turned. Oh, no! It did make me laugh. And also by the Scotsman, uh, apparently you are tender, frightened and convincing. I mean, it's working for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've made Sandy Walsh blush, but in a, in a good way. It was for me, being in the supermarket in Accrington and my elderly lady's coming up to me and saying, when are you and Marie getting married? And me saying, well, we're not allowed to because Hayley's transgender and and them going, never mind that, they should be together. And that's the way to change the world. I'd say about yeah. this film is it's perfect to take someone on a date to, because... Because you don't have to at, talk to them, yeah. Did you do the old yawn, arms around the back, <laughs> creeping down the front? It was very I'm, tempting. I'm doing a bit. Bra. <laughs> Sliding the bra out of the top, yeah. <laughs> it's an art to that. I interviewed on the same day Idi Amin and Harold Pinto. Difficult for me to say who was most difficult and intimidating of <laughs> the two of them. I mean, were you in the same room as these people? I was in the same room as Harold Pinter. I oh. wasn't necessarily in, but I, I collected them. That's probably the best put choice them together that would as a, Yeah, Harold always was, but we became good friends over the years, yeah. and I didn't continue my relationship with Idi Amin, I can tell you that. <laughs> And I had a terrible problem because my Hamlet kept treading on my very pointed toe shoes, you see. So I had to kind of keep trying to leave the stage. But of course I couldn't because he was on the foot. And it was written as this sort of very camp thing. And I actually knew a couple of people that auditioned for it. And they said, oh, it's this very sort of camp actory type. Mm. I thought, well, I could do that. But it said, Len is tall. And uh, Mark Gator sent me an email and said, will you give me a ring? And I thought, he's not doing that to tell me I've got it. Uh, he's just being nice because he is the nicest man in the world. And he said, look, we've... We loved what you did, but... And I said, you've gone for somebody tall, haven't you? And he went, yeah. I could never get an agent for years because of my disability, so I had to be my own, which was good for me, actually, because it taught me a lot of discipline. And so... And negotiating for the right fee, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> yeah, not as good on that one. Okay. More about getting the role. Now, what makes this film interesting is that it's actually really the story about two men, because J. Edgar Hoover, for so all of the... <laughs> <laughs> Look, Nick, there's not much man-on-man -man action in this uh, movie. But yeah, what it is, go, go is a sort of story Just about... Just very intense here, right? Go on, go on. It's a story about uh, 
<laughs> so we have done this for either for a couple of months. Uh, so, anyway, go on. Okay. Yes, it's better be good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically. J. Edgar Hoover, famously, was he gay? And I just think, actually, that if you don't have older actors and older actresses, you're not really getting a view of a balanced society. How much can you tell us about Mary Poppins, and uh, can you succumb to tickling or bribery? Um, neither, because otherwise I'll just get a huge <laughs> smack bottom from Disney. Um, uh, uh, I can only tell you that it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> and there are amazing people in it. And if you, if you know. know who's in Meryl it, Street, Meryl Streep and, Street, Street. and uh, uh, Emily and Colin Firth. Mm. And Meryl Streep's a bit overrated, I think. <laughs> oh, apparently. Sad! Exclamation mark. And then there was a guy who was supposed to shout something from the wings and he didn't come on. And I, very oh. quick thinking, because I've got a very deep voice, I rushed off to do this old character who actually was still in the toilet. Okay. And I went off and I went, and the line was, Give me some light. And then I ran back on as Ophelia. <laughs> I've made up for it. I, yeah. I've spent many, many years since making amazing commercials, teaching people how to make sure that they don't get infected with STIs. Oh, right, that's so lovely. I'm, I'm, I'm the voice of chlamydia. So the review came in the next day. The first Ophelia to start out mad and go slowly say. My simple mantra is... Never accept the world as it is. Dream of what the world could be and then help make it happen. No, I love it. Carol Decker on Scratch and Sniff with a goodie bag. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed it tremendously. And uh, thank you for, for picking up on so many things that I'd, I'd actually forgotten about. Did Katie get all this? Oh, yes, she got all this, yeah. No, wonderful. I tell you, Nick, it's been a total pleasure. I should get highly drunk. Thank you very much. What an enjoyable interview.